Gaza has only one honey producing season, which begins with the onset of the warmer weather in March and lasts until the first week of May. This usually sets up Gaza's honey production for the year, with 200 tons of honey produced. But this year, the weather stayed cold, with unexpected downpours until the second week of April, and then became unusually hot. The prolonged cold affected the blossoming of Gaza's many citrus orchards and vegetable crops, leaving the bees with fewer flowers from which to collect nectar when the weather turned warmer and then too hot again. These wild swings in the weather have cut honey production in the Gaza Strip by almost a third and are threatening the territory's bee population. You are listening to Beyond the Headlines. I am your host, Ahmed Meher. This week, we are looking at how the decline of the bee population is threatening food security and whether climate change is to blame. Before we begin, please subscribe to Beyond the Headlines to get all the latest episodes. The honeybee holds an almost mythical status in some parts of the Middle East. It is mentioned in the Quran, with honey being described as a healing food and as a treat for the faithful in paradise. Beekeeping has a long history in the region, dating back thousands of years to the pharaohs of Egypt. Archaeologists have found pots of honey during their excavations, and inscriptions of ancient Egyptians with honey pots are found on artifacts thousands of years old. And in the Gaza Strip, it is held dearly by the population of more than 2 million and is much sought after for its widely known health benefits. But climate change is taking a toll on Gaza's honeybees and consequently the 500 registered beekeepers. Although some Gazans take up beekeeping as a hobby or to produce honey for family consumption or to sell on a small scale, all of Gaza's honey production is consumed locally. Overall, Gaza has produced only 140 tons of honey this year, a sharp drop from the 200 tons produced in 2021. Globally, the decline in honeybee populations has been noted for many years, with alarms being raised in 2006 when beekeepers noticed an unusual decrease in honeybee colonies. Beekeepers from the US and Europe have regularly reported annual losses of hives of 30% or higher since then. Back in Gaza, the effect of prolonged cold spells, which lasted until the second week of April and the following searing heat, have played havoc with the honeybee ecosystem. Temperatures rose to 42 degrees Celsius in some parts of the tiny territory of about 365 square kilometers on the eastern Mediterranean coast. As bee populations decline worldwide, there are people working to understand bees and the biggest threats to them. Delphine Panziera is one of these people. She is a researcher at the Wageningen University in the Netherlands. She explains how it is not just the effect of temperatures on the bee itself, but how rising temperatures can make colonies susceptible to other dangers. So the growth of the colonies is maybe not matching the environment anymore. Another effect of climate change, and that's, I guess, considered often the biggest threat to honeybees is uh, parasites. And what, uh, how climate change is linked to that is that with climate change, many parasites, um, many exotic parasites that are invasive, for example, uh, in Europe or in the Middle East, are much more successful because they have uh, higher temperatures in some areas and so they can reproduce uh, more easily. And also it's, it's easier for them um, to then invade new uh, colonies of honeybees and spread much faster. So I would say, yeah, the, the threats 
to the honeybees are mismatch between the colony life cycle and the environment because the, the environment and the climate conditions are changing very fast. And with that also comes different conditions that are often favorable to parasites. I would say that, that those are the biggest threats to the honeybees at the moment. So the whole ecosystem gets thrown off kilter by the effects of climate change. And even if the bees manage to survive a cold spring or a scorching summer, there are the bee babies, known as larva, to protect. The problem with that is that their life cycle is matching their environment. So when the resources, when it's getting warmer in spring and the resources are increasing because you have all these flowers and plants growing and becoming available again, then the colony grows with that. So they start producing brood, um, so uh, eggs and larvae. And for that, they need to warm the colony very high. They need to keep the temperature between 35 and 37 degrees at all time. And that costs a lot of energy. So what can happen in spring if, if it starts very well and, and you have nice increase of temperature, a lot of uh, plants available, um, then they're going to invest a lot in producing brood. And if you have a big switch in, um, in the weather, what well, that, that is not really what they expect. Bees are unable to leave the hive when it is raining heavily. Rain can make the bees' wings wet and cause them to slow down. They also use the sun for navigation and so very cloudy days are a problem. On the other hand, if the temperatures rise above 40 degrees Celsius, it can kill male bees, known as drones, and opportunities for mating and reproducing will be severely affected. To protect the colony, the hive must be kept at a certain temperature. If it drops below the temperature, the bees can freeze to death. To maintain that temperature, they need to get enough energy from nectar or the honey that they produce from the nectar that's stored in the hive. Without nectar, there is no honey. Without honey, the temperature of the hive can drop to lethal levels. From the bees' perspective, they have a lot to take care of. The old idiom, as busy as a bee, has solid grounding. The bees must decide whether to risk the rain or to stay indoors and protect the temperature of the hive. And if a bee leaves the hive, it may find the fruits and flowers the colony relies on for food have not bloomed due to the bad weather. Ibrahim Jarada is a beekeeper in Gaza, and he is very attached to his bees. It is uh, really, really so bad to see uh, this happening, and uh, our hearts are really feeling uh, so down because we really uh, love these uh, bees from our hearts because it's related uh, to, to our work and to our family and because it's uh, something good for the nature, for the planets, for the earth, for the people, not for the business side. Ibrahim has suffered a major setback this year as the extreme weather has affected his bees. His honey production was only half of the 300 kilograms he expected. He says that the changing weather is responsible. Actually, in the past, we have to see uh, four seasons. But now, uh, the winter is very long. We feel that uh, we moved from the cold to uh, the hot and summer, directly without any time of the spring, the beautiful uh, withers, uh, the flowers, the birds, uh, you know, the spring season. So this year, we, we really uh, feel this. In this season, especially, I think there is no March. It's just a winter and then the, the summer. This is what, what I uh, saw during my works. I remember that there is a lot of winter, a lot of uh, cold happened uh, and effects uh, our works and our bees. And now when I'm talking with you, also the summer and the high thermometers 
also affecting beehives. Uh, so this year is uh, one of the uh, baddest years that we feel and that we saw for many years ago. Ibrahim's family has been keeping bees for almost 50 years in Gaza. There have been many challenges over the decades, including the ongoing conflict with Israel. With most economic activity affected by an Israeli blockade imposed after the Palestinian militant group Hamas took power in 2007, many people in Gaza depend on agriculture to survive. Climate change is the most recent challenge to both bees and farmers alike. Gaza is known for its fertile land and varied crops, especially olives, grapes, and citrus fruits. Honeybees pollinate most of Gaza's crops, including lemons, oranges, and tomatoes. It breaks Ibrahim's heart to see his bees dying and starving because they ran out of stored honey and they couldn't collect the nectar from the flowers, as they used to do every year. Bees can fly in a limited range. On average, this should be between 1 and 6 kilometers from the hive. Within this area, they must collect nectar for food and collect pollen for the nests. Ibrahim is helpless as he watches his bees die. This is May uh, happened in the winter season. So after this winter season, when I checked my bees, yes, many of the beehives uh, actually died from our beehives. And this is because of the uh, less of the food and the cold. The United Nations estimates that three quarters of the world's flowering plants, including all fruits and vegetables, rely to some extent on bees and other pollinators. The organization has expressed concern at the decline and disappearance of bees and wild insects, mainly the result of climate change, pesticides, and plant diseases. Delphine Panziera explains why bees are so crucial and why losing them is potentially devastating. So bees are important to humans, but of, of course not just to humans. Bees, when they collect uh, nectar and pollen for their food, they also provide what we call an ecosystem service because they pollinate the plants. Uh, plants need to reproduce just like animals, just like everything. That, that's how life happens, but they cannot move. So they need someone, they need in this case insects or other pollinators to move the pollen from one plant to another to have genetic exchange and to be able to reproduce. So that's why bees are so important uh, for plants in general, for ecosystems, because one bee colony, it's estimated that foragers fly, can fly on average five kilometers away from the hive, but we know that they can go up to 10 kilometers away from the hive to collect resources. It is a mutual relationship. The bees benefit from us planting and not polluting the environment and we get our food from them when they pollinate the flowers. If the bees die, the human food supply will be in tatters, with an even heavier reliance on crops such as wheat that are pollinated by wind. But what would a world without apples, mangoes, almonds, strawberries, cardamom, or tomatoes even look like? Seeing the big picture, Ibrahim has decided to prepare for the man-made climate risks, mainly by covering the hives with oak bark to protect them in the cold weather. He inherited his passion for bees and honey making from his father and grandfather and is keen to pass it on to his children and grandchildren. But with climate change casting a pull on the future of the honey industry, he fears that more bees couldn't make it past the potential cold spills in spring next year. He will tend to his bees and leave the honey for them to feed themselves this season. He's hopeful that the bees will recover at some point and his business will grow. He hopes to have more beehives with more swarms to take the total number to 200 and distribute them 
in different parts of Gaza close to the farms for a hopefully lucrative season next year. We are just trying as much as we can. For example, in the winter, uh, we provide the beehives with the food. We provide them because for the very uh, cold, they cannot uh, leave the hives and to go outside. And also there is no flowers uh, bloom to get the food from them. So we try to give them the food in the winter and uh, we're trying to open the covers of the hives to let the sun enter inside. Actually, in the summer months, we put them under the trees. We provide a water resources around them. All of this uh, we're trying to do because uh, to, to keep the bees and uh, their queen uh, healthy as much as possible. You have been listening to Beyond the Headlines. I've been your host, Ahmed Maher. If you have enjoyed this week's Beyond the Headlines, please subscribe to get all the latest episodes and we would really appreciate a review. Thanks this week to Ibrahim Jarada and Delphine Banziera. This week's episode was produced by Arthur Edison and Aisha Khan. <laughs>